Wake up! If you left this on auto play, wake up! You've been sleeping too long! Hi. It's Wolf Den Podcast time. Hey, everybody. How are you? <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good, Will. How are you? Are you excited that your favorite band from middle school is getting back together again? <laughs> uh yes i'm so yeah. excited oh, are you what the hell are you talking about oh i know what you're talking about like like 182 tom the is back in the band and they're going on a world tour wow that's so travis cool. doesn't fly oh I, you know <laughs> i don't blame him yes he it, had, it is interesting. he had part of he had a little bit of an incident with planes. It, it's i i just realized this that blink 182 broke up and then they got back together after Travis's incident, near death incident, and now they're getting back together after Mark Hoppus had a near death incident. Well, his was cancer. <laughs> his was cancer. Right? Travis okay. Barker was a plane crash. Yeah. Yes. And wasn't so he, wasn't it, Travis the sole survivor of the plane Travis crash? Travis and one other person. I think it was DJ AM. Was but the, the then he survivor. died. He died. Then he like, died. Yeah. Very shortly after. Yeah. So yeah, Travis is the sole survivor. I, I think he crash. died from injuries from the plane crash. I thought he died of alcohol. Uh, poisoning. He, they fell into a vat of alcohol. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, if you want to get Blake 182 back together, it takes a near death experience. <laughs> right, right, exactly. A couple, yes, a handful of them. Uh, I don't care at all that they're, <laughs> they're back. <laughs> Their new stuff has not been good. Honestly, I gotta be honest with you. I used to play in pop punk bands, and we used to like cover Blink One Eight Two songs back in like high school and stuff. Never really liked them that much. I think I just liked <laughs> them because all of my friends liked them. I could, I get it. Yeah, I, I like, I like their like really old stuff. And, yeah, like that's basically it. I, yeah, like everything after. It's it's weird. That's like the definitive everything they after they got famous kind of sucks. <laughs> Yeah. The same thing but, with My Chemical Romance. Yeah. Although I heard that but, they, they, they've been play, they played in New York recently and it was very good. People are telling me that like Black Parade is actually very good, but I'm hesitant to listen to it because I like didn't really care for their more like right. polished stuff. Uh and they played on Thursday, and I'm upset about yes. that because I would have gone if I knew that. <laughs> see, I see Thursday is actually a band I never really got into. But I've heard at least three covers done by Thursday, and those are excellent. They're great. So maybe Th maybe I just like the covers. <laughs> well, uh, Thursday, I think it's War All the Time. One of their albums has the worst drum sounds, <laughs> but it only works for them. It sounds good right. for them for some reason, but the tones right. are god-awful. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, we're a video game podcast. I guess... Uh, well, we're also a movie podcast because uh, today yes. the only the only real news that happened this week is the Mario movie trailer dropped. I didn't want to talk about it really because I already talked about it uh, uh, on stream a bunch, and I also we talk about it extensively on the Nintendo podcast. However, uh, I think it's important for Will to weigh in here because. <laughs> Uh, we both have similar accents, and 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 yes. uh, we sh we should be uh, equally as outraged by the changes yes. that were made. <laughs> uh, also, the N Nintendo podcast isn't out yet. I I I, I talk so much <laughs> about this shit, I forget like what yeah. people have heard or, or or not. So I'm like afraid to like talk like double talk. But uh, there's more stuff. Apparently, there's a new Xbox console. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just fucking got got uh, leaked, but like leaked, but like not but, really. They're but trying like, to hide it. Well, it's like it seems pretty official to me. This is yeah. like a pretty official leak. Uh, mm -hmm. Pilot Wings is coming to Switch. Uh, there's some Splatoon three stuff that will that I put in here that I don't want to tell Will about. Uh, it involves pornography. I, I I know about I know the headline of it, but I don't know the details. All right, well. We're gonna get really, really into those details, yeah. uh, and a bunch of other stuff yes. uh, that we that we gotta talk about. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, no, there is no before we get into that. None of you people gave us money, and there's no <laughs> new games for the new the new platforms. So uh, yeah, fucking let's just go right into the Mario movie. All uh, right, 
Here, here we come. Here we go. <laughs> Video game purists expecting a faithful adaptation of the Super Mario of the original Nintendo game might be somewhat surprised by the first trailer for the new Super Mario Brothers movie, which debuted on Thursday. The clip's dark and bombastic opening features King Koopa, voiced by Jack Black, as he lands in a fiery, rocky ship on an icy nightscape belonging to the Penguins, who first appeared in 1996's Super Mario 64. It's only when King Koopa reaches the floating golden invincibility star with the little black eyes that the teaser makes it most direct reference to the original 1985 game that started the franchise, one of the most successful in all of gaming. Pause. Is that an invincibility star, or is that the star at the end of the level? It's a star at the end of the level. It's Two very clear. It's yeah. very clearly the a uh, star at the end of Mario uh, Mario sixty four level. Yeah. What is that what called? Does that have a name? Superstar? Isn't it just the superstar? I I think they just call it star. Uh, also, uh, I, maybe my alerts are messed up, but uh, D Master gave us forty bits and Mecha Dragon gave us five dollars. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, also, what else did I want to say? Uh, I, I'm afraid to like play the the trailer. Yeah. Um, because I don't want to get striked or whatever. Yeah. But uh, I'm so assuming everybody here has seen it. Yeah. It, yeah. you know, Hannah was talking to me and she was like, I don't like, what makes you think this movie is going to be a big deal? I was like, are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> but, 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 but like, like she, she was of the mind that this is only a big deal in like our circles. And I was right. like. Mario is probably the most recognizable video game character of all time next to yeah. Pikachu. <laughs> yeah, he is he is synonymous with video game. Like it's like when you think And he hasn't Super had animation at yeah. all. It's like in a really long time. Superman is synonymous with comic books. You know, S Super Mario is synonymous with video games. It's that direct one to one. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a big deal that he's getting He's getting another attempt at a movie, and this one looks to actually look like a Super Mario Brothers movie. Uh, the chat is saying power stars for the stars that they know the level. Uh, we should know I'm these things. I'm going to take your word for it. We should know these things. I should know these things. Anyway, uh, yep, it's the, next scene, the next scene in the clip is a much more direct homage showing the titular mustachio plumber here voiced by Chris Pratt. We'll get to that as he lands out as he lands out of a golden pipe into a lush and sunny mushroom kingdom that connoisseurs will remember from level one in the very first game from 1985. This is also when the game's memorable music is finally heard, albeit briefly. The CGI animated film from Nintendo and Illumination features several other big name stars, including Charlie Day as Luigi, Anna Taylor Joy as Princess Peach, Hika Michael Key as Toad, and Seth Rogen as Danky Kang. The last time the iconic video game was translated into a feature-length studio film was almost 30 years ago with the ill-begotten 1993 release uh, starring Bob Hoskins and my friend John Leguizamo. <laughs> this new movie is scheduled to hit theaters April 7th, 2023. What? Okay, okay. So uh, if we want to go beat by beat in the trailer, uh, okay. Bowser. first thing you see is Bowser, basically. Yes, yeah. Uh and and his little interaction with the penguins. Uh this was incredible. Yeah. yeah I don't think was... this could have been any better. This was this was Yeah, it, it was pitch perfect. perfect in tone, in style. I mean, yes, it was a little bit like darker if you want to call it that. But the Mario games, especially like something like Galaxy and Odyssey, never like strayed too like far. Like they strayed into that territory a little bit. It was still like you know, family appropriate, all ages appropriate, but it gives just the right amount. It's it gives the, just the right sense of danger and fun that like all ages can enjoy. Right. Uh, and Jack Black did a phenomenal job. Yes. It's the best yes. voice of the whole trailer. We hear, <laughs> we heard a lot of voices. Yes. Uh, and, yes. and Jack Black was for sure the best one. I, the first line he says, you can't even tell it's Jack Black. Yeah. But then everything else you're like, okay, it's Jack Black. <laughs> Yeah. People were even comparing Bowser's face to Jack Black, like the way he says stuff. And I don't know if yeah. that's true. I just think... I mean, do you think they performance captured the faces? I think they probably did, but I think that Jack Black just has such an expressive face that anything yeah. they did, if it was 
expressive or animated, it would have looked like Jack Black's face because he's just so <laughs> good at at uh, uh, having such like a cartoonishly expressive That's true. face. It's like when Robin Williams voiced the genie in Aladdin. He was like so animated that the illustrators wound up copying his movements from the vocal booth, mm. even mm. though they were already halfway through the movie. Uh, so all of that was great. Yes. And then you hear a little weird version of the Mario music, and then he gets fired out of a, a pipe, and then here we go. We see Mario, and it's exactly as we feared from the from the leak. Uh, he looks like this. What do you think of <laughs> what do you think of his look? You know, I think he looks. I didn't expect him to look like he does in the game. I expected right. them to be differences. You know, you. It's foolish to think he, he would look exactly like he does in the game. I think he looks fine. I think if you showed that to somebody who doesn't follow games like we do, they they wouldn't know that was Super Mario. I think that I think that's a fine look. I have seen the photoshops where they make his eyes bigger and the end bigger and it does look closer to the game. Mm-hmm. Um but I think uh, on a whole that's that's Mario. That's that's what he looks like. I also think it's fine, but I do. I am a little annoyed that it isn't closer to the game because it's such an iconic look, and he has looked like that for what twenty years, and they now all of a sudden uh, are making. It's just like you know, there's mini games and shit where you put his <laughs> his the pieces of his face together, and like they didn't do that. <laughs> so 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 I I posted I saw on Reddit somebody like. Uh, uh, fixed it or made it closer to... Uh, oh, yeah. I think that's what I was talking about. It is. Uh, they made yeah. it closer to what the game looks like. Uh, and yeah. that's just... You're right. It's just bigger eyes, bigger mustache, and, and a bigger M. Yeah. And that's really all it, it took. And they also, like, I don't know, raised his shoulders, I guess. Um, yeah. And I honestly think it looked better. Uh, and I was like, oh, this is what was... Because he does look weird. He, he, he looks he looks noticeably different and a little weird in the in the in the movie and when i saw the leak i was like something is off with this and people were saying (laughs) uncanny valley and i don't think it's uncanny valley no i just think it's you're used to seeing him one way and now there's a very slight difference that is that is making it feel making you feel weird that's the uncanny valley that you're feeling so yeah on screen right now is a gif of before and after and a lot of comments talking about how he looks worse in in the uh, uh, <laughs> in the after in the in, yeah in the version that uh, uh, the guy on Reddit made, uh, and I don't I I as part of me was like, do these people know which one's which? Because I think he looks so much better when he's uh, when his face is bigger. I think he looks more recognizable to us as Mario with this face bigger. Mm. I don't think his movie look overall is a problem i think they wanted him to look like mario he looks like mario these are remember this is not nintendo making this movie this is illumination making this movie so they had their own artists and their own creative design team working on this yeah nintendo approved it and they probably signed off on this look Mm -hmm. but you know, if they wanted to use the assets from the video game, they would have used the assets from the video game. And they that's clearly not what they wanted to do. Uh, this is another criticism I've seen. Uh, Volus in the chat says he looks like Fixed Felix from Wreck It Ralph, but with a mustache. I've seen that, yeah. That's yeah. because Fixed Felix is supposed to be Mario. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that makes perfect sense why he would look like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I I get that like uh this is a different version of Mario and uh a lot I mean where the minority here of people that are playing the games and are very big into Mario, most of the people who are going to watch this movie are not going to be able to tell the difference. Yeah. They're they're going to think it's a guy with a red hat and overalls it's Mario to me. Mm-hmm. So it 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 is what it is, I guess. Um Anyway, he gets blasted out of a pipe. Here he is in the Mushroom Kingdom. Wow, it's wow. crazy looking around here. Uh, and then he sees uh, Toad, which sounds uh, it's it's Keegan Michael Key, I think, and yeah. uh, he's definitely pitch shifted or something. But he sounds pretty yeah, good. They, yeah, he sounds fine. He sounds like what Toad should sound like if you wanted him to not be annoying for an, a ninety minutes straight. Yes. Yes. Uh, 
And then and then we hear more of Chris Pratt's voice. And uh, yeah. what do you what do you think? What do you think of uh, Chris Pratt's voice? Now 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 what I think is is that uh, he he he's going for a more Brooklyn accent. Yes, he's and going I for, think I just yeah. think he sounds like a guy who is almost from Brooklyn, but not quite. Yeah, he sounds like somebody trying to sound like he's from Brooklyn, rather than actually sounding like he's from Brooklyn. Yeah, I mean. I posted this on Twitter not so long ago. Oh, he's from uh, like well, South Jersey or something. He's like yeah. almost there. He's like not really. He's like trying. So maybe he'll yeah. move there one day. <laughs> I posted this on Twitter. I think the, the day the trailer came out. Up until Charles Martinet in 1996, mm-hmm. every time they tried to give Mario a voice, be it in a commercial, one of the cartoons, the movie, whatever, even one of the games... Uh, which was on the CDI, so I know that doesn't count. They went with that style of a voice. They went with that Brooklyn, you know, major New York metropolitan area style voice. Um, and so for people of my generation who grew up on that before Mario 64, that's kind of, you know, that's what Mario sounded like. Yeah. You know, there was no consensus that, like, that's what he should sound like, but that we all just accept that. He was a plumber from Brooklyn, so of course he probably sounded like that. It wasn't until Super Mario 64 when we all heard what Nintendo thinks he should sound like. And then, you know, since then, we've accepted that. Yeah, I I don't mind if he sounds like, uh, like, like a Brooklyn guy. I mean, Mario's origin is is very confusing and makes no sense. Yeah, and, and and so I don't. It, it it really doesn't. It really doesn't matter where he's from, because yeah. uh, he's an Italian plumber from Brooklyn. That's what everybody thinks when they think of Mario. They think of an Italian yeah. plumber from Brooklyn. Uh, was he? Did he? Was he born in Italy? And like, where <coughs> no. did he get the? Where did he get the accent from? That's yeah, because he was I born think- in Yoshi's Island. Yes, I think canonically he was born in the Mushroom Kingdom. Okay. I but think then, it was but only... then how did he end up in Yoshi's Island? Yoshi's Island is part of the Mushroom Kingdom. Oh, okay. That makes a I think, more sense. Or, or at least it's like an island not too far from the Mushroom Kingdom. Um. Yeah, I think the Brooklyn thing wasn't even... I think that was part of the localization, bringing Mario over to America. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the cartoons ran with it, and the movie, the original movie ran with it. But, like, Nintendo never, like, told us that that was wrong, that that interpretation was wrong. They, they just, like, basically let it happen. And then, I guess, Yoshi's Island was the start of them, like, trying to streamline everything. And then Mario 64 was like, this is what he sounds like. It's kind of like how... um Dr. Eggman was always Dr. Eggman in Japan, but in America, it was Dr. Robotnik. And Sega never really tried to change that until Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. So. I found a map of the Mushroom Kingdom from Paper Mario. Okay. (laughs) I don't see Peach's Castle. It looks like it's probably there. Uh, But uh, Yoshi's Island is on the bottom left. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's in the world. But you know, yeah. it's it it's it's part of it. So you, Mario, I guess, was born in the Mushroom Kingdom and somehow got lost into Yoshi's Island. Isn't Mario yeah. and Luigi's dad somewhere in one of? I think it was in the cartoon. You see their dad for like a second, maybe. Um, but that's just another, there's all these different uh uh canons of yeah. Mario. Uh, also the idea that he was from Italy and moved to Brooklyn, where does New Donk City come into that? Because New Donk City is probably the Brooklyn that we're talking about. Yeah. It's probably not actually Brooklyn. It's probably New Donk City. Or maybe it was called Brooklyn, and then they turned it into New Donk City after the tragedy of Donkey Kong happened, and then (laughs) Pauline had to step in. Yeah, yeah, but which one is canon? We don't know. That's the thing, is that they're all fucking some sort of canon <laughs> it, it, that's what I mean, i'm saying it makes no sense the thing about like the mario games is like it's one of those situations where canon doesn't matter like every yeah. game is just it its should. own thing yeah 
So, so, so the movie has to try to make sense of all of this, and it's yeah. not, it's not gonna get it all right because you can't. It's, it doesn't make sense. I personally think they shouldn't even try. It should Mario should just be a, there, you know. Like we don't yeah. need to know where he's from. I, I kind of don't love that he's being thrown into the Mushroom Kingdom, like as an outsider. I hate that trope. What's it called? Isekai. <laughs> It's like an anime thing where like a yeah. guy is just appears in a new world. And it's like your it's the way to like have the viewer kind of uh, uh, relate to the world uh, by yeah. seeing it as as an outsider through the main character. And I think that that is just not creative. I think that it's been you don't need that. Like we're not that stupid. We could just figure it out. <laughs> it's kind of like the reverse of what they did in the first Sonic the Hedgehog movie where in that movie, they had him sent to Earth and have him like yeah. do wacky stuff on Earth because they were afraid we wouldn't understand the Green Hill Zone. Yeah, just do Sonic Adventure. Yeah. I don't understand. Just have the Green Hill Zone as like just like a weird place that nobody's ever been to. It's just it uh, I it, it I don't I don't like that. Uh I I'd I'd rather it just I'd rather he just be he just exists or that's how the games are. He just exists already. We don't even ever oh. question it. We're just like that fine, whatever. I just want to run and jump on shit. Well, again, like that's what the games are now, but like in the beginning, it was heavily implied that he was from Brooklyn. And now he's in a place that clearly is not anywhere in the United States. Yeah, but like I don't care so. how he got there. You know, like I don't care. Yeah, I don't care what happened. All I, all I know is that he's got a weird accent. That's all what I is, know. What does, what does Patton Oswalt say? I don't care about uh, how the stuff I liked became the stuff I like. I just care about the stuff I liked. Yeah, that's fine. Basically, I like. I I agree with that. Yeah. Uh. So anyway, I think Chris Pratt doing a Brooklyn accent is fine. I I also think. Uh, people said it can't be like a like a like a caricature of an Italian accent because it'd be hard to listen to for ninety minutes. Yeah. I also think that's kind of bullshit. Just don't let him talk that much. Be a little more creative. Have the supporting I, characters talk more. I mean, it's it would be difficult if this is the Super Mario Brothers movie and it's a movie specifically for younger audiences hmm. to not have your main character like say the bulk of the dialogue. That's a challenge. Yeah, and I don't think I that this is the kind of movie that you know you'd want to you know put that challenge to in a way. I I don't see why not. I mean, he doesn't fucking talk in the games. <laughs> he like barely says anything. He just he makes like makes you know, some sound sounds. effects. Yeah. yeah. Are they gonna have Link talk when they do a Zelda movie? Because they will do a Zelda movie, and if he talks, it's gonna be a big fucking problem. They're gonna have to. No, they're, they don't have to. They do not have gun, to. No, just have the have supporting to. characters talk. How are they going to do a, like a two hour movie where the main guy is a mute the entire time? Like Breath of the Wild, where all the cutscenes are Zelda talking and it's called The Legend of Zelda. <laughs> They're they're gonna have like that. They're gonna like make some crack about it, or like be weird about it. Is like e your friend doesn't say much, does he? Ah, cat got your tongue. I see. Like they're gonna do shit like that, and I yeah. would rather just have him talk to ignore all of that. I'd rather not hear him speak. I'd rather it just be the way it's been for thirty <laughs> years. Also, didn't didn't uh, Samus not talk for a while, and they then then, then she didn't shut up. <laughs> Samus didn't talk for a while. They gave her a voice in Other M. I mean, to be fair, they got a bad actress and they gave her bad dialogue. Then she they didn't talk in Prime, right? She didn't talk. She almost talked in Prime. The, uh, on the disc, there exists a uh, dialogue from Jennifer Hale as Samus, like reading the intro cutscene text. Mm -hmm. So there was almost. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, they uh, she speaks all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, in, in dread, I think she speaks Chozo. So. Well, that's that the, it it uh, it's kind of it's a spoiler for dread, but uh, yeah. But also, I mean, if she talked another M, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Uh, Bob, this is a different medium. The character needs to talk, otherwise, we don't care. I mean, otherwise, you don't care. They could do a good job with making him not talk as much. It really shouldn't be that that 
hard. It it would be it would right. be a challenge, but it's been done before, and they could do it uh, again. Talk shit, Tony says. Mad Max Fury Road, the main guy barely talks. Um, true, but on the flip side, technically the title character doesn't talk, but the main character, who was Furiosa, does nothing but talk. <laughs> so. This is the Super Mario Brothers movie. Mario is clearly going to be not only the title character, but the main character. So having him have little to no dialogue is going to be a challenge that this type of movie really isn't built to, you know, go up against. Well, the alternative is hearing Chris Pratt talk for 90 minutes. So, uh... <laughs> and look, I Pick get your it. Pick Chris Pratt is a very limited actor. He's good as Andy Dwyer and Star-Lord, and that's it. And with Star-Lord, it's only when James Gunn is directing him because they tried to making him do Star-Lord in the, the Jurassic World movies, and it wasn't the same. So, I Mr. Get it. Bean. <laughs> Explain that one. Mr. Bean. First off, Mr. Bean talks. Okay. How much Mr. does Mr. Bean talk? Mario talks. Enough that I know what he sounds like. Yeah, Mario he sounds like a and, and, he sounds like a mumbling idiot. <laughs> it, it comes it, it it comes to a point where Mr. Bean was designed to be a silent character. Mario wasn't. I we're then we're getting to get into. He's he ju he just fucking makes noises, unintelligible noises is what Mario does. What's the he first speaks thing a language that nobody on the planet speaks at all. <laughs> What's the first thing you hear when you boot up Mario 64? That's all he says. I've listened to every voice line in the game. Don't come at me with that. I've listened to every voice line in Mario 64. He says two or three sentences at most in the whole game. The but longest still... sentence he has is, thank you so much for to playing my game. That is the <laughs> longest sentence he has. He still says a substantial amount of words enough that he like people would have to have conversations with him. He could have conversations. It's just he does. He barely speaks English is the whole thing. I think it would be fine if he barely spoke the language of everybody else around him. It would make sense I for him not to talk that much if that was the case. I think ultimately. Like Mario taught like that's going to this is the least of the movie's problems is having Mario talk. And like mm -hmm. who they got to cast him. And I feel like we're making a much bigger deal out of this than it really needs to be. And I feel like that's going to negatively affect the movie. Like, I don't give a shit if this movie is successful or not in the long run. But this movie could wind up being good. This movie can wind up being great. But it could have like 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. But the fact that Chris Pratt is Mario is all anybody's going to talk about. And it's all anybody's going to remember this movie for. <laughs> I know. And that sucks because he could give an Oscar worthy performance. And all people are going to say was, yeah, but you fucking weird guy was Mario. <laughs> I don't think he can give an Oscar worthy performance. <laughs> I think he could only be Chris Pratt. And, and I think this is the most character acting he has ever done in his life by just giving it a hint of a Brooklyn accent by enunciating his A's a little differently. That's the most un Chris Pratt thing he has ever done in a movie before. But then the question becomes who should they have gotten then? Like in, in who else? Well, like an Italian guy. <laughs> I honestly think that the movie is going to be good. I, I, yes. I, I'm just, I'm just nitpicking here. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, look again, I don't think he's, you know, the best person to play this role. I do mm -hmm. think he's a limited actor. I do think, you know, that there was probably somebody else that could have gotten for this role, but I think the movie as a whole looks like it's going to be fine. I think his performance from what we've the little bit we've seen of the trailer will be acceptable. It'll be like a C if that's acceptable, unless you're our parents. So I think it can <laughs> like it'll be okay. So we did ask our mother what she thought yes. <laughs> of the new voice. We didn't show her the voice. 
No, but uh, we asked her if she preferred somebody trying to do a Brooklyn accent or somebody trying to do a cartoon Italian accent. And she said, uh, I don't like when they make Italians sound stupid. And what yes. she meant by that was like a caricature of an Italian yeah. accent, which is what Mario is. So yeah. from our Sicilian mother, the verdict is she'd prefer not for Mario to sound like he does in the video games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she might like Chris Pratt's voice more. Yeah. Also, I need to hear more of Chris Pratt's voice. I honestly yeah. don't think he can hold up even the Brooklyn accent for the whole movie. I think that, yeah. I think that it'll just sound like Chris Pratt for a lot of it. Yeah, that's true. Also, I'm worried how he's going to say his own name. I'm worried that he's going to say it's a me Mario. Yeah. If he's or going no, he's going to say it it is me Mario. <laughs> he's not even going to say it's a. If he's going for Brooklyn rather than Italian, then he can't say it's a me. He has to say yeah. it's me. And that's going to that's going to piss people off even more. I mean, he already <laughs> says, here we come instead of here we go. Does because he? if, yes, he says, Mush mushroom kingdom, here we come. That's what he, that's how he says it. Instead of here we go. But if you say mushroom kingdom, here we go. I guess that's a little better, but you can't do yeah. it. Here we go. Cause that sounds weird with a Brooklyn accent. Yeah. You have to go, here we go. But here we go. It'd still be better than here we come. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's fucking what Barry, you had the thing. You had it all laid out for you and you fucked it up. <laughs> that might not be his fault, but I feel like it is though, because he's he's working on the the voice making it more Brooklyn than Italian, and that seems like a like a like a purposeful change. Yeah. Uh so yeah, I don't know how he's. I don't know. I need more. I need more from his voice. We got what yeah. two sentences out of him. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's definitely he's definitely going to be saying more. You know, I guess the, the look. The next trailer will definitely be like the full trailer, as they call it. It'll show mm -hmm. more of the movie, more of the story. Probably let us know what like Peach sounds like and what Luigi sounds like, Danky Kang, and all those guys. So. We did hear a little hint of Luigi, and you know what? Yeah. I heard the little grunts and stuff I heard from Charlie Day sounded great. <laughs> sounded like Charlie Day. <laughs> it sounded. Uh, I was. I was. I feel like. I feel like for the most part, I'm going to be fine with with everything that's going on. I'm going to cringe a little bit at Chris Pratt, but at the end of the day, I feel like the movie. You'll, be you'll probably good. get. You know, you get used to it the way you get used to like, you know, a new Batman's voice. It sounds weird at first, but then like you just accept it as the movie goes on. I'm also interested to see where Mario has come from if he's being thrust yes. into the Mushroom Kingdom. But again, I'd rather just have been thrusted myself into the well, Mushroom Kingdom. Well, we know that Sebastian Maniscalco is playing Spike, their boss from Wrecking Crew. Yes. So they clearly have a day job somewhere. In, in, in a, Probably in a, from New York. Yeah, in, in a... In, 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 a, in a world that is based off of New York. So, like, yeah. it could be New Donk City or it could be actual New York. We we don't. Uh -huh. We don't know. Because Donkey Kong's there. Yes. So. Uh, and where's Donkey Kong from? <laughs> is he, is he mean, in the Mushroom you know, Kingdom part or is okay, he in the fucking he, other world? People are going to complain about, like, Chris Pratt as Mario. Okay, I get that. But, like, let's be real here. Seth Rogen is playing Donkey Kong, so they're going to make him do the fucking Seth Rogen laugh like they do every time he's in an yes. animated movie. Yes. To the point where that was referenced in that crappy Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers movie. Oh, my God. And they're going to throw it in this. You watch. Like, we're not sick of that yet. Uh, let's read notifications. We got okay. oh, Anonymous. Thanks for the gift of sub uh, to the small bean. Uh, X Sync Cynic, thank you for the prime. Uh, Gimp Dirt, thanks for the prime. And Kate McCat, thanks for the 29 months. Crisp Rats, Mario voice, just sounds like Star Lord doing a bad imitation of Rocket. That's a good point. That is a good point. Now I want to see that in Guardians 3. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's Festivo. Is he Spike from Wrecking Crew or the green enemy from the Mario games? So he is Spike from Wrecking Crew because on yes. the, uh, uh, because first of all, he said it. Also, he's yeah. fucking Italian. He's clearly got yeah. like a little, he's, he's got a good accent. 
Um, he should have been fucking Mario. <laughs> um, <laughs> then our parents would have definitely seen the movie. So uh, in the Nintendo Direct when they announced it, he had a little icon that was the foreman from Wrecking Crew. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of uh, news outlets took the the actors and put little pictures next to him and they, i guess they just googled spike mario and they picked the yeah. green character that throws up the spike balls they picked yeah. him as who sebastian mascalco was playing and they were wrong about that uh willow thank you for the dollar all right let's move on from mario see the trailer if you want yes. to or if no if you have i mean you even if you don't want to you got to see it it's fucking it's a good trailer yeah. Uh, anyway, Microsoft has a new uh, console coming out. Or do they? I'm almost positive they do. They do. No, they do. <laughs> uh, Microsoft's head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, has just revealed the company's dedicated Xbox game streaming device. Spencer published a photo of the device on Twitter where you can see it sitting on top of his shelf in his Microsoft office space. Uh, it's a small white box that resembles the look of the Xbox xbox series s and will be dedicated to accessing xbox games over the company's x cloud um xbox cloud gaming service yeah excuse me you got microsoft was it that pretty it, it yes uh microsoft first announced it's it was planning an xbox streaming device last year and may had incorrectly assumed it would be as many had incorrectly assumed it would be a stick that would plug directly into an hdmi port while Microsoft is working on this Xbox streaming console, codenamed Keystone, it will more likely be it will it will be more of a box or puck like device that attaches to monitors and TVs. The Xbox streaming device will also likely include access to media apps like Netflix and a lightweight user interface to launch Xbox games. Microsoft acknowledged the Keystone name earlier this year, but revealed it was working on a new revision of the device. Sources familiar with Microsoft's plan tell The Verge that the Xbox team continues to work on its streaming device and still plans to bring it to market. Microsoft has managed to launch an Xbox TV app, though, uh, available on 2020, 2022 Samsung TVs and monitors. Xbox TV app launches games from uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming and supports streaming at 1080p up to 60 frames per second. You simply log into your Microsoft account in the app and stream Xbox games just like you would through an Xbox Cloud Gaming in the browser. Microsoft hasn't officially commented on the appearance of its Xbox streaming device, but the Xbox account on Twitter replied to Spencer's tweet with, now what did we say about putting old prototypes on your shelf, boss? That was a big wink, wink, nudge, nudge, if I ever seen one. All right, well, that makes me feel less confident that it's coming out because they straight up said that's an old prototype. Well... Old prototype doesn't mean that there isn't a new prototype in development. Right, right. Or a new version of this. Right. It's it's very clear that they're working on something. They yes. have, they confirmed Project Keystone a while ago. That box is the first time we've seen anything remotely close to what this Project Keystone could be. Mm -hmm. Like the article said, we all thought it was like a Fire Stick or a Roku Stick. And clearly, Microsoft is working on more of a set-top box, like an Apple TV or something along those lines. I'd like for it to have some meat to it. Like, yeah. like uh, I want there to be some processing going on there. Now, I, I mean, I'm not saying I want games to run off of it, but uh, there needs to be something to be able to handle all of the video that you're getting. Like, like, yeah. like a Chromecast is fine, but... If if you start streaming things at 4K or something, like you want something to fill in the blanks, maybe some AI upscaling or 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 something. So there should be some meat to it. Also, input lag and stuff. There, the, the, yeah. There's technology that could that could mitigate that stuff, and it's got all got to be in there. So so having a little bit of meat to it is probably a good thing. Uh, yeah, I think also too, like a streaming stick. I mean, I'm sure a streaming stick is the ultimate goal down the road but in order to process game data at a good rate a box would be make more sense because you have more room to put more stuff in there to yeah. make it work also like streaming sticks are like good enough for like your mom or a small <laughs> apartment 
you know, maybe not like for high speed gaming or like true performance. Yeah. You know, power. Cause even like you use a, you know, you know, fire, an Amazon fire box compared to a fire stick and it's night and day. The stick like chugs just trying to stream YouTube. I mean, I'm thinking more so like uh, the the shit that's built into TVs versus even a dedicated stick. Like I'd yeah. still rather use a stick than whatever the fuck they use in TVs because that shit right. sucks. Yeah. So, to in my brain, the bigger the thing is, usually the better it is. Yeah. <laughs> so like, so like, hopefully they can pack some shit in there that'll make it a little better. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, if you think about it, it doesn't need a disk drive. It doesn't need a big hard drive or ssd it doesn't need you know probably you know as big of a cooling unit you know it, it doesn't need as much stuff but it still needs enough stuff the the freaking xbox series s is small enough i think it's tiny yeah. as all hell the yeah. xbox series s is as big as the new geforce 4090 <laughs> graphics cards the graphics yeah. card <laughs> is as big as the entire xbox series s mm -hmm. so what does that say about the xbox and what does that say about the 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 new geforce card i was also going to say the uh, i saw that the uh, xbox series s has some wacky sales going on target yes. had it for 250 plus a controller <laughs> yeah and and uh uh, uh walmart had it for two hundred and eleven dollars. Yikes! I think Amazon a steal. had a um had a warehouse deal for the same price. So it's a great uh, emulation machine too. If you yeah. need a, if you just want a little dedicated emulation device. Uh. Also, the uh, Xbox Series X fridge has been on sale but i hear it's like super shitty so i don't I, yeah I, i've been i've been i saw it on sale for 75 bucks and i was like i don't i can't uh, it's a little shitty i don't want it and then i saw it on sale for 55 bucks and i was like i could just put controllers in it maybe <laughs> <laughs> anyway it seems like my i mean obviously we know microsoft is trying a lot of streaming stuff um they we knew about this keystone device that they've been working on the code name keystone device we don't know what it's actually mm -hmm. called uh we knew something like this was happening uh we haven't seen anything about it though uh we also knew that they are involved in the uh cloud gaming device from logitech which is also yes. on phil spencer's shelf uh phil spencer seems to be a big fan of this thing <laughs> uh also uh i'll bring up i don't think we have an article about this but google just made uh they they released a a Google Pixel no Chromebook they released a Chromebook that is focused on sh game streaming oh i did which not is see that insane because yeah. they just canceled Stadia <laughs> <laughs> uh so even Google is like you guys fucking deal with it. We're done with, uh, with yeah. game streaming. You guys handle the service. We'll just uh, we'll, we'll make some hardware for you. Yeah, which could be a pretty a pretty cool thing. Here is a found an article. Google is trying to make Chromebooks built for cloud gaming. Asus, Acer, and Lenovo built Chromebooks optimized to run services like GeForce Now. It seems like they're really going heavy with GeForce Now. Oh wait, no, there's Deathloop, Xbox, and Control. Luna. There you go. Um, but no, I think that they're, they were mostly showing off, uh, GeForce now. Cause, cause they said something right. like, uh, I don't like the way they worded it. They said like 3080 TI like performance. <laughs> okay. But some of these, look at this, this one, the Asus one, 144 Hertz refresh rate. So that means wow. they want to stream at 144 frames per second. Right. That seems like a tall order. Yeah. I don't think most streaming services can reach that. Uh, maybe G I'm I'm sure GeForce Now probably can, and that's probably why they're 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 focusing on on that. And it's also only at 1080p, so yeah, that that seems more reasonable. Uh, this one, uh, which one's this? Oh, this is the Asus one. It's four hundred dollars. Jesus, for a fucking gaming laptop. I mean, you're gonna have to yeah. have really good internet. Yeah, but still. 
This whole streaming thing, uh, I think streaming just makes games a little more accessible to people. People like oh, yeah. us who and everybody who's listening to this, I'm sure, we just we really like games so much that we will consume gaming content and stuff. So yeah. uh, we know the best way to play games. So we're going to try to do that because we want that experience, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. Some people just can't manage that. And some people don't want to bother. They just want whatever they can do to play the game. So like, uh, I think that streaming is just a way to make gaming more accessible to more people. And I think that's only a positive thing. And in the, in the near future, yeah. people like us will probably continue to play games on dedicated consoles and, and computers and stuff. But, but uh, other people uh, who don't have that stuff will probably uh, start picking up uh, a streaming. A streaming will be a little more uh, uh, mainstream than it is right now, as yeah. uh, as long as you have internet. That's the another problem, is that maybe you don't have a console to play the game on, uh, but you also got to have good internet. So that's another thing that could be a hurdle for some people. <sighs> anyway. Uh, we got more notifications too. We got uh, where where did I where did I leave off? Oh, G Gem Gem with three hundred and ninety bits. First time catching you live. Love you guys. Usually not enough to be up at two a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. Go to bed. Go to bed. That's what I'm doing. Watch us in the morning. Yeah. Uh, all right. So that's uh, Microsoft's whole thing. They're making a new console. I think this is a. Yeah. Uh, 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 I think. I mean, I don't think it. I think we're close to the holidays. I think it'd be weird yeah. to like announce it for the holidays. I mean, they very much could like this week or next week. Oh they yeah, could just come out and yeah. be like, here it is. It'll be ready here for the is. holidays. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like yeah, if it's if they wanted to do it for the holidays, they probably would have needed more lead time. Right. Well, like announce well, it at E three or whatever. Yeah, lead time to announce it, but uh, maybe yeah. they're not. I don't know. I I I have no idea. Uh, hmm. Mecha Dragon says, "Did you see my comment about Comic Con? Did you do it with the cheer? Because uh, that shit's broken." Uh, anyway, Comic Con I was good. I... Yes, it it wasn't bad. I, I only went the one day. You only went the one. Day, right? Yeah, we only went one day. Uh, uh, it was pretty good. Yeah, it was fun. I found uh found some comics I was looking for. Found a couple of figures I was interested in, and that was it. I didn't get a lot i stayed under budget um which was nice um yeah, i did was relaxing <laughs> <laughs> i got a, a a big old piece of art from uh jay lee it's it's batman and his batmobile and yeah. it's very pretty and i showed it on the last stream that i did uh and yeah, yeah i don't i don't have anything that i got i got um i got the issue of teen titans i was missing from uh jeff jeff johns's run got a couple more wonder woman books i was missing I got uh, the Arkham Knight uh, McFarlane Toys Batman figure because it was inexpensive and it goes good with my Gotham Knights Robin figure. I think those pair very well. Uh, I got a Wedge Antilles Black Series figure that I'm very proud of. Oh, my God. <laughs> I got the McFarlane Toys 90s Kyle Rayner action figure because that's a Target exclusive. And our targets here on Long Island don't get exclusive figures. You so got a lot of stuff. Uh yeah. I got a lot of stuff, but I didn't get as much as I would have gotten in years past. So I also got poster for my wife. It was the Foo Fighters, but designed to look like the Fantastic Four number one cover. And I got a poster for my son. Uh it was a Dan Wara poster of the entire Bat family, and he autographed it. Uh, because I didn't know I was going to his table during the hour he was doing autographs. <laughs> uh, I've been I have pictures on my Twitter of of uh, yeah. I I should have posted pictures. I have not posted. Pictures. Here's the art that I got. It's very nice. It's Batman. It's Batmobile. It's very cool. And then also a little Spider Man sketch. Nice. Uh, by uh, Guidry. What the hell is his name? I thought it was Dave Gavin. Gavin Guidry. All right. Uh. What else did I want to say? Oh, usually I go there and I like, the, there's usually like some crazy Mega Man figures like every single year. Yeah. This year, they only had Battle Network. Oh. Not happy about that. 
Not I not almost bad. I did almost go over budget because I'm still I still want authentic NECA 1990s uh Ninja Turtles movie figures. And I saw a booth had them unboxed for forty dollars each. And I feel like I could have haggled with them, but I didn't feel like going through the frustration. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm still got, on still on the hunt for those. We got Mr. Suspenser for uh with a subscription. Thank you. We got T Bird, thank, thank you. you, with a subscription. And we got A Rod Dragon with 14 months. Go Yankees. No. Kick him out. His name is A Rod Dragon, Will. <laughs> what did you think he was gonna I don't know, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> uh oh, there's a deal on these Sennheisers. Look at this. Wow. Eighty nine. You know how I'm in maximum way. dad mode? There's a good deal on a black and decker uh rechargeable battery for my weed whacker. <laughs> That's wow. Wow. <laughs> You can't have too many batteries for your weed whacker kids. Let me tell you. Are you, you. going to come do my lawn too? <laughs> how much? No, no. <laughs> Dad and I are going to teach you how to do your lawn no, one time. I'm getting the guy. I'm getting the guy. Oh my God. I don't want to oh touch anything. God <laughs> damn. You, you say that and then you look at how much they charge you and you see all the things that they do wrong and you just do it yourself. I'm not going to know what they did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to know. That's okay. All I do is do it wrong. <laughs> uh, does dad make fun of the way you, you do it? Does dad come over and then go, oh, you're sure you messed this up? He he did come over uh, on Saturday and go, you know, all of this are weeds, right? <laughs> and it was like my oh, entire, my like lighting the entire fence. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm like, come over next weekend and help me pick them. All right, we got uh, Pilot Wings coming to Switch. Here it is. Wow. Yay. Okay, so not the N64 game we wanted, but one of the N64 games they said was coming. It's Pilot Wings, the second game ever released for the Nintendo 64. Uh, people love Pilot Wings. It's not GoldenEye, yeah. but it's, no, uh, it's, it's a good game. Yeah, no, I'm not saying people don't like Pilot Wings. I'm not saying Pilot Wings is a bad game. I'm just saying you promised us GoldenEye. That's gonna and be you a give while. us pilot wings first. I will say this is a beautiful game. What the? I've never. I gotta be honest. I haven't seen much pilot wings, so this game looks <laughs> really? fucking weird as hell. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a weird game, especially like back then, because like you play Super Mario sixty four. You're like, oh, okay, what else is there to play on my N sixty four? And it was only this. And is this? This is. I mean, it looks like just Superman sixty <laughs> four. But like, pretty much same concept. It works. Uh, it looks beautiful, except for like you know the uh, the 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 UI, but yeah. uh, the game looks really good. Yeah, I mean for for a launch N sixty four game, it's not a bad game. Like it holds up to a point, you know, as well as like N sixty four games do hold up. So this is going to come out on uh, Thursday. Yes, uh, I'm going to play this. I'm going to try this out. Yeah. Who is Mario replacing in Mount Rushmore? Uh, he was first, Roosevelt? right? So that if he's first in the lineup, then that's Washington. Washington, okay. Yeah. Why Washington? I don't. Who else? Wait, who else is in Mount Rushmore? Washington, Jefferson, like, okay. Roosevelt, and Lincoln. Okay, yeah, no, he's he's Washington. Okay, yeah. Very strange. They didn't think that was like insensitive to 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 replace wash our founding father with well it depends it depends on who you ask if you know so some people mount rushmore itself is insensitive because they built it on uh the, these days land <laughs> these days i'm with you but back in <laughs> in the 90s i feel like people would have been pissed about mario yeah. being on mount rushmore uh uh Anyway, uh, nah, I'm gonna play that. That looks that looks uh, yeah. looks pretty good. Because I've I've honestly never played Pilot Wing 64. I played it for a Super Nintendo for a hot minute. Yes. Uh, and I played the shit out of the DS version, the 3DS version. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I've never played 64, even though it's like a lot of people's favorite in a 64 game. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, let's talk about Splatoon. 
<laughs> multiplayer. How to make it a little more fun and interesting for life. How to make shows, it a little more huh? spicy. Yeah, I don't know how much of this I can even show. Uh, <laughs> Splatoon 3 streamers sneak adult content into online matches. Uh, okay, there's nothing here. A Japanese VTuber streaming group has issued an apology after its members projected adult content into online Splatoon 3 matches. The stream in question has held was held on October 8th by streaming group Sin, Sin so Gumi, <laughs> subsequently causing AV Su, Supira, uh, adult, Supura adult video Splatoon to trend on Twitter in Japan. <laughs> uh, the content itself was inserted into online matches by utilizing a chroma key to effectively make the opposing team's ink color a canvas for displaying naughty content in the background. So basically when they started a match, they would uh, see what the opposing team's color was and they would chroma key it out. And under the gameplay in OBS, they would put porn. <laughs> Japanese porn. So that means if the enemy team inked more of the stage, then more of the porn would show. So if you so you have to win, you have to win the game <laughs> or else you will get banned on YouTube. That's what right. the, that's what the game was. It's actually pretty genius. Uh according to a post from Automation uh or or ta- Automaton, Automaton all participants in the stream knew that the adult content was being displayed in the background and were allegedly in competition with each other to see whose stream would be banned by YouTube first. Not only does the content go against the platform's gu- uh, community guidelines regarding nudity and sexual content, but it also goes against Nintendo's policies on streaming game content online. As such, Nintendo's corporate Twitter account has issued a fresh reminder of its streaming policies. So this got so big that <laughs> Nintendo had to make a response. It seemingly hasn't altered its rules nor made any direct mention to the incident with Splatoon 3, but the timing of it certainly shows us, uh, certainly allows us to connect the dots indicating the company is concerned about the misuse of its property. Let's read what Nintendo said, but it's translated from (laughs) Japanese, so it's going to be a little weird. Mm -hmm. Uh, Notice of public relations. Please see the guidelines below. Uh, And the second tweet says, uh, use... Use that violates public order and morals, acts that intentionally mislead the rules of the game, acts that significantly damage the value of the game or characters and the world, and acts that encourage or take advantage of them while will be deleted or legally enforced. We may take measures, including measures. Please be careful. Uh, And the article says, one participant in the stream... uh, Ikinon uh, issued an apology the following day, though their appearance uh, raises questions regarding their sincerity because they were they're they're a VTuber. They don't like to show their faces, so it's a live video right. of them dressed up as as one of those inflatable dinosaurs. Right. Stating, uh, "I made light of breaking the terms of service and simply jumped at the novel and interesting idea." Uh, Seen so gumi also made a statement on Twitter regarding the incident stating it would uh it would punish Ikinun uh though what acts what exactly this would entail is currently unknown. Uh so I saw a video of this uh <laughs> and cuz I had to and yeah. um it's like pretty much it's like pretty pixelated so like it wasn't really like that big of a deal and also like Japanese porn already has a lot of shit blurred out anyway so it's already like not yeah. that big of a deal. <laughs> You're probably not going to see anything anyway. Um, and from the clip I saw, you can uh, there's no, you're not you're not seeing much, but it was right very funny because <laughs> she sure was, was in fact those, losing. I'm sure it was one of those things that like it, it is funny, but like you got to be careful about actually doing it because it, it could cause a lot of problems. Well, you know, if you do it too much i think the stream was age gated already okay so it wasn't like you know they were letting kids watch this shit anyway right Uh, what's what's scarier to me is that uh this is uh nintendo shouldn't really have a say in this because it's somebody streaming the game you know this is i've talked about this 
we've talked about this before how uh th these co these game companies have the rights to their game the copyright to their game and us mm -hmm. streaming it or showing footage of it or whatever is technically a breach of the copyright they just allow it to happen because it's good advertising for them and this is a case where nintendo is will not allow it and 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 come in and 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 stop it and that's something not a lot of western companies would ever do yeah because uh uh they just usually don't step on the toes of streamers and this is a case where they're like no yeah. this is like you're making our our ip look bad so uh we have to come in I don't know if they would do this to an to an American streamer, but because it was Japanese, they felt like it was it was such a big deal because it was trending that then they're like, okay, well now we do. I feel see well. This. I feel like Nintendo would because Nintendo is that protective of their IP. Would they you even know, see I, it? I, I'm like, sure. Like the I'm fact sure that it's get... in Japanese, the fact that it was trending on Japanese Twitter, I feel like is what made. Them, I'm sure uh, it would get so back quickly. to them. I'm sure it would get back to them in some way. Lord, Lord DC in the chat says it's not even a mod; it's chroma keying. I know that's what I'm saying. It's literally just their character was juxtaposed with pornography. That's the only yeah. thing that that uh, the that had the problem. Which what it's that's never been fucking done before. Putting <laughs> uh, putting Mario next to some porn. Yeah. Uh, War lyrics says Tendo was going after people for showing the trailer of Mario. Yeah, that's why I'm not showing it. Yeah, because <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Uh, only Charles, thank you for the Prime subscription, and To Tio Kenobi, thanks for the 12 months. Uh, okay, what else do we have here? Uh, the original black box art for The Legend of Zelda has been revealed. Oh yeah, I put this here. Uh. We don't need to read the whole article. Uh, it's All just right. this is just something we've I've never seen before. Um, Martin Lindell, who is games industry pro since '94, written books about Nintendo in Sweden and Swedish game dev history. Uh, he found this. It's like a it's like a it's like a binder that has original art for Zelda cover cover art that has Zelda on it that that looks like the black yeah. box NES games. He tweeted, nice seeing these old early versions of pack fronts for Zelda and Punch-Out. And it looks like an advertisement for, for the NES yeah. and some NES games. And there's some stuff here. I've Maybe I've never seen the Slalom one. but uh, Slalom is the last of the black box games. Uh, oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, we, that, was, that was a quiz. That was part of the yes. quiz. Yes, it was. Uh also of note, uh, Punch Out is up there. Punch Out is not a black box game. When that was first released, that had you know that was Mike Tyson's Punch Out. It had Mike Tyson on the cover, right? Um, and here, Glass Joe, your first opponent in the game, is the cover star. Yeah, and it's just called Punch Out. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, there, right in the middle, the biggest deal is Zelda, right there. Uh, and he's smiling. There's a little tiny smile on him yeah. for some reason. It looks very strange. I'm happier with the box art that we have now, the gold box yeah. art. Uh, I just thought this was neat. This is uh, artwork yeah, we've no, never seen Yeah, no, this is cool. Before. This is like video game history right here. Mm -hmm. Introducing four good sports and a princess named Zelda. There you go. Okay. Cool, dude. All right. Uh, the next we have Kojima teases his next game. Yeah, I was very confused by this. I didn't know what the fuck if this oh, was a well, new game or if this. Of course, you were confused by it. It's Kojima. Mm -hmm. Kojima Productions is making a game with Elle Fanning, the star of The Great. Uh, the studio announced the collaboration as part of an elaborate teaser campaign that began back at the Tokyo Game Show in September. At the time, it was shared. It shared an image featuring the face obscured in the shadows with the tagline "Who am I." On Friday, fans got an answer to that question when PAX uh, Australia attendees found a QR code with the link to Kojima Productions' website. The webpage hosts an updated version of the image featuring the portrait of Fanning. 
Kojima subsequently shared a tweet implying that there would be more teasers at an eventual reveal to follow with an eventual reveal to follow. Uh, as for what they point to, Polygon suggests that Friday's teaser is most likely tied to a Death Stranding sequel. In May, actor Norman Reedus shared an interview. Um, he had just started work on the second game in the series, although Kojima Productions has yet to formally announce the title. A producer with the studio shared Kojima's tweet using the hashtag Death Stranding. That tweet has since been deleted. I'm However, seeing it's strands worth... on this picture. <laughs> However, it's worth noting that Kojima is working on at least one completely new game with Microsoft. Uh, the, where I, the Where Am I image uh, the auteur shared may also point to Overdose, a horror game Kojima is reportedly making with Death Stranding and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood actress uh, Margaret Quake. Uh, Quayley. Uh, either way, Kojima is likely to share more information about his next project at the Game Awards on December 9th since he is, has a long history with host Jeff Keighley. A horror game? Yes, apparently. <laughs> a horror game Kojima is reportedly making with Death Stranding and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood creator Margaret Quar- Quar- Quayley. I didn't know he was working on a horror game. Me neither. So it could that be the the Microsoft game? Because this article I, seems it, to think there's the Microsoft game, there's Death Stranding two, and then there's a horror game. Yeah, that's and, too many things. <laughs> well, Elle Fanning is starring in one of those games, <laughs> or maybe she's in something completely new. It sounds like Elle Fanning is doing Death Stranding two, and it sounds to me right. like. The Xbox thing is probably the horror thing. If there's if there even is a horror thing, that would probably be the right. Xbox thing. I don't think Kojima's being spread that thin. Also, I th- I do believe that he's work. He has something to do with a Metal Gear uh, reboot or 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 remake of the original Solid. I do yeah. think that he has something to do with that. Uh, so uh, that's that's what I think he's up to. Okay. Otherwise, this is all very confusing. But I'm sure the article <laughs> says you'll probably hear something at the Game Awards, and that's true because he's buddy yeah. buddy with with uh, with uh, Jeff Keighley. Uh, anyway, uh, new controller converts to a fight stick. Uh, I don't like I how you wrote the- that because oh, that's the name of the title. This yeah, this is not a fight stick. Well, I should perhaps I should have said fight pad. Yeah, it says fight pad what- on the fucking controller. <laughs> uh, a, co- a company beat Sony's DualSense Edge controller to the quarter circle punch uh, it's a fighting game joke PDP's uh, Victrix sub-brand announced the Pro BFG a wireless PS5, PS4, and PC X input controller aimed at fighting game enthusiasts and officially licensed by Sony the Pro BFG delivers more than just a swappable analog sticks and directional pads the highlight, the highlight feature is a modular p- uh, plate that lets you remix the layout of the controller. It costs $180 to pre-order and launches in December. The default layout of the Pro BFG is similar to the default layout of the PS5 controller with the analog sticks near each other underneath the touchpad. Uh, you can keep it that way or you can or you can use the included hex screwdriver to flip it around so that it's more like an Xbox style arrangement with offset sticks. Or you can replace the right module entirely ditching the right analog stick for a six-button configuration akin to what you'd see on a fighting stick. The customization goes further with a total of three D-pads, Victrix's diamond-shaped option, an Xbox-style eight-way D-pad, or Sony's uh, PlayStation-style D-pad, and two extra analog sticks, one short convex option, and one that's much taller than the default stick. Uh, with the with the analog sticks, you could swap out the default gate for an octagonal one, so you'll be able to feel the stick's precise location as it hits as it hits and moves along the edges, which is handy when you're trying to com- uh, commit moves to memory. There is also a customizable rear paddle, uh, giving you more buttons at your disposal. The BFG Pro is wireless, although it supports wire a wired mode via USB C. Uh, like the DualSense, it can deliver audio through its uh, headphone jack. Unlike Sony's controller, it doesn't have rumble or adaptive triggers, though it has other f- functions that help to justify its higher price. Uh, the throw distance of the triggers can be customized with a switch, giving you the option to simply tap them to register instead of uh, fully pressing them down. 
Uh, also has rubberized grips around the front and the back, and it can be and it can store three control scheme profiles and three audio profiles to the controller. Also features a toggle switch on its uh, top side to swap between PS4, PS5, and PC. On the bottom, there is a switch to flip between wired and wireless modes. Uh, the controller will be out at the end of 2022, giving gamers plenty of time to get comfortable with it ahead of Street Fighter VI's release next year. O- octagonal? I said that. Octagonal. An Octa- octagon. Octagonal. 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 <laughs> uh, anyway... Uh, why I'm trying to find the tweet of the week and it's fucking not showing up. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm not. I think that there's there's a lot of controllers that do this. This is the first one that does it for the PS5. Uh, the, I I think uh uh, the hell's the name of it? Astro Whoa. makes one. Astro makes a controller that does a little flippy of of the of the sticks. Yeah, I just uh, closed the wrong windows. The the, the 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 big thing about this is it has the fight pad insert. Yes. That's the big yes, thing about that's, this. Yeah, uh, that's that's why I put it in here because that's what you know, well, that's what interests me about it, because they're trying to make it a customized controller for the fighting game community. One of the uh, the way I I don't like these types of controllers because uh I'd rather it just be right the first time <laughs> than right. having to 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 fuck with it because when it's modular, there's always something that makes it not as good. And also, you're never going to change it back. Once you put it the way you want it, you're not going to change it again. You know? Like, I'm going to put it in fighting game mode. I'm never going to put it into freaking... Uh, 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 I'm never going to put it into uh, uh, regular PlayStation mode again. It's going to be my oh. fighting game controller. And then I'm just going to pick up the PlayStation controller for a regular PlayStation controller. Yeah, I guess like this is definitely for someone who wants all like who plays fighting games regularly and who wants like all the buttons there on the face instead of having to use triggers to perform certain moves. I just Yeah, I guess I guess you're right. You know, they're going to set it up once and then never set it up again. I'd be curious yeah. to see if this becomes like anybody's like default controller though for uh fighting games. It's jack of all trades, master of none situation where where it, it's it's just gonna be like a little shitty to the point where I'd rather just have a a, a controller that acts like a fight pad. Um, yeah. But I did think this was a little exciting for one reason because people always ask me, "What is a controller that has the layout of a Wii U controller?" Because the Wii U like like the or the the Wii U like Pro controller. Had the yes. thumbsticks on the top. And yes. people really like that for some reason. And they yes. want a controller that can do that. Now, I mean, I don't think this can do... I'm not sure if this can do that. I thought it could because it's no. fucking modular. But uh, it's not confirmed if it can. Right. So I tweeted that this looks like it could do that. Uh, because also I wasn't sure what was modular. It looks like the whole thing comes out. But then, wait, yeah. Yeah, if you can reverse this, why couldn't you reverse the other one? <laughs> the issue is that the buttons would be in the wrong spot, but, like, yeah. so what? You can remap them on the PlayStation. Yeah, I think, you know, because that Nintendo, the Wii U Pro Controller, like, it was comfortable, and the buttons, like, were in a position where, like, you didn't have to move your thumb all that far. Um... You know, it wasn't a bad idea for a controller. So I'm surprised that, like, other studios haven't, like, tried to replicate it in some in one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, so I took this, uh, I tweeted this, and then somebody said, doesn't look like they can do it. And then I tweeted at Victress Pro, and guess who never tweeted back? Yeah. So uh, they don't seem to care or have an answer. Uh, but again, right. I mean, if you could flip the left one, I don't see why you couldn't flip the right one. Yeah, it, the buttons will just be weird. They'll be in weird spots. But like, uh, I mean, it, I need to see. I need to get my hands on it and see because I want to see like what would prevent you from fl- flipping it around. Is there yeah. contacts on the bottom that aren't in the right spots or something? That's the only exciting thing about this to me is that you can flip yeah. the right. It's being able to flip the right stick. If you can't, then I'm not really interested in this at all. I'd rather have an elite controller or something. Yeah. I mean, having a D pad at the top is nice. 
being able to flip that back and forth to the top is pretty cool. But again, I'd yeah. rather just pick up another controller that has the D-pad on the top already. Yeah, Bob, buy it. I'll watch. Isn't it expensive? <laughs> Will said the price before. $180. That's not too bad. For a controller that could do that, that's not yeah. too bad. Uh, as I say that, War Lyric, $180 is way too much. There's an Astro one that is also like $200. Also, the Scuff one, I don't know if you can flip it on the Scuff, but that one was, that PS4 controller was $200. So, they, they, yeah. These custom controllers are, are pretty expensive. Uh, Mecha Dragon X was two months, two month streak. Oh no, I broke the streak. Sorry, bros. Uh, <laughs> no, 14 months. Yeah, 14 months. We don't care about streaks. You do whatever you got to do. Yeah. Uh, Scott the Sloth, thanks for the $10. If you had a message with that, I can't see it because, uh, everything sucks. Sorry. <laughs> oh, he did. Uh, hi, Wolf Bros. It's, is it just me or is Sony? slipping this generation between these totally extraneous remakes and lack of exclusives there doesn't seem to be a reason to own a ps5 also f jeff jim ryan horse f jim ryan's horse shittery what horse shittery did jim ryan do uh i'm not sure the specifics i did see something that people are mad that he's bringing more playstation games to pc Which I don't, which I don't think is what they're mad about, but I can honestly see some people being mad about. That's that. not a bad thing. Yeah. Um, I think you know, I do think that Sony is kind of like resting on their laurels a little bit. They were leaps and bounds ahead of Microsoft last generation. Like that was not even a question. So they're kind of like coasting right now. Not saying that they're putting out bad stuff or whatnot, but. You know, the PS5 is clearly was launched before it was finished. Um, they they haven't been able to put out a lot of like really good. I mean, they put out them putting out good first party games, but not at the same clip as they did last generation. They are a bit remake heavy at the moment. Um, I mean, you could say the same thing about Microsoft though, to a point. It's it's we're we're in a weird position like this generation. So yeah, I think I that. Just, yeah. These companies have a hard time navigating uh, the way that gaming is right now and how people like yeah. to play their games and what is impressive about gaming. Like usually yeah. the, the new console, it's like, this is impressive and this is why you want it. And they're really having a hard time showing us that because technology is so far now, uh, but 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 mm-hmm. not far enough to show us like why we need this new console, you know? Yeah. Also, too, let's not forget that a lot of uh, game developers were stuck at home for two yes. years <laughs> in the middle of so, launching this whole thing. Yeah. So, so we really so slowed it, down getting getting uh, the the yeah, new generation going. That it really hasn't helped things all that much. Yeah, I do think that Sony's been slowing down with uh yeah. with this whole shit of like 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 the remakes and stuff. It's a little crazy, but I mean, Microsoft also is kind of doesn't have that much going on either yeah i haven't turned on my playstation in forever <laughs> yeah. i'd much r- whenever there's a new playstation game i'd much rather play it on pc because then i can play it on my steam deck yeah i mean so just I'm do that s- i'm still playing my ps4 there's still games on there i'm enjoying there's still games coming out for it there's, there's no reason to upgrade for most people yeah god of- ragnarok is coming to ps4 so yeah if i wanted to play it when it came out like i don't wait mm-hmm. uh let's talk about twitchcon yes twitchcon seems to have been a gigantic disaster <laughs> <laughs> well one aspect of twitchcon in particular seems to um seems to be causing people a lot of pain literally mm-hmm uh, a streamer says she broke her back in two places and will require surgery after jumping into an apparently unsafe foam pit at the TwitchCon in San Diego. Another streamer dislocated her knee at the same stand. Yes. Well, I broke my back in two places and I'm getting surgery to put a meter rod in for support today, says streamer and adult performer Andrea Chechik, uh, as she tweeted on Sunday. Her fall was caught on video by fellow streamer Jake Lucky, 
Uh, the video is embedded below, but be warned, it is uncomfortable to watch. Uh, he didn't catch the video. He just post reposted the live stream. Get it right, yeah. Polygon. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm not uh, playing just... it because I don't want to show somebody breaking their fucking back on the stream. But it's yeah. She does like a she jumps off this little pillar and lands right on her butt. Will you yeah. did that once? Uh, in a foam pit or like in life? No, you fell off of the top of a baseball cage and landed yes. on your butt. Yes, I did. That hurts. Uh, <laughs> it was dark and I couldn't see where I was going. That was incredibly painful. Wait, hold on. Also- you climbed a baseball, you know, the cage that you have around right. a baseball field. You need to no, tell No, 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 no. It wasn't that. It wasn't that. What it was... It was a it was the high school baseball field, mm-hmm. and it wasn't the cage that like is behind the catcher. It was the cage that the team sits in. Oh, so, it's so there's lower. two on each side. It's much lower. Okay, I yeah. thought you the whole. I thought the big one. No, no, I would have been in the hospital. <laughs> um, yeah. So and the cage was pitch black, and we did it at night because we were a bunch of fucking hooligans, and I couldn't see what I was doing. I just walked right off and landed right on my butt. That shit hurts. There's a difference, though, between that and what happened uh, here was I was being a stupid kid. uh, And these people put their trust in the hands of others who thought they built a competent foam pit. And as we'll read more, they did not. Yeah, it's really they really fucked this up. Yeah. Uh, After an American gladiator style battle with foam pit batons, uh, foam batons over the pit. Uh, Chechik is seen jumping in and shouting in pain, saying, I can't get up. Uh, in a separate but very similar incident at the same stand, streamer Locke Van Ness uh, reportedly dislocated her knee and spraining and sprained her ankle after jumping in. I will never be able to trust Twitch at another convention in my entire life, she tweeted with video. Again, the video is embedded below and painful to watch. Another attendee said he went right through the foam and hit the concrete floor after jumping into the foam pit, though he reported no injuries. Many attendees said the pit seemed dangerously shallow. Yeah, look, you can, I'm not going to play the video, but you can see her standing. It's barely up to her knees, and she doesn't look very tall. So, yeah. uh, And, and, and the, again, the bottom under the foam pit is the concrete floor of yeah. the convention hall. If you, if you've never seen a foam pit or never jumped into a foam pit, those are generally like six or seven feet deep. So yeah. you have enough room to jump into like all of this foam. This like barely went up to people's knees. So it was barely a foot and you go through the foam right to the floor. That mm-hmm. shit hurts and it's very dangerous. The foam pit was part of a stand sponsored by Lenovo and in, uh, uh, sponsored by Lenovo. I can't say the other one because it could get you in trouble. You can a say Lenovo- that sponsor this video. <laughs> <laughs> sponsored by Lenovo and Intel. A, a Lenovo representative told Polygon it intended to look into the incident. We are aware of the incidents at TwitchCon. Vi- uh, visitors who sustained injuries at, in the Gladiator game saw foam pit. Um, safety remains our top priority and we are working with event organizers to look into the incident. Twitch declined to comment. Just, uh, just a, a story of negligence. Like, like yes. just a, 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 this could, this could have and should have been stopped, uh, you know, many times and th- nobody said anything, you know? I think what made it, makes it worse is that like multiple people got hurt doing this. Not, maybe not mm-hmm. like seriously injured, but like they got hurt and it didn't help that there was an announcer there who every time someone got hurt would go, they're fine. They're fine. Oh, they're fine. Okay. Cause get it's up. so awkward to be the announcer watching yeah. people hurt themselves like over but, and over again. But I mean, one person, I mean, there were some, uh, s- some substantial injuries. One person I would argue did get seriously injured and yeah. all of these minor injuries happened before the serious injury. So you, yeah. the after like the second one, shut the fucking thing down. You know, <laughs> yeah. After one, like you should have probably shut the thing down. But after one, you're gonna be like, okay, maybe that's a fringe case, you know, whatever. And then the second one, you're like, you got to be like, all right, people are gonna be falling like crazy yeah. here. We got to do something about this. And I don't know why they were being stubborn about shutting the thing down. It's really not a big deal. It's a stupid foam pit. Just just, just cut your losses and shut the fucking yeah. thing down. 
You're going to have somebody yeah. break their stupid back, and then you're going to have a lawsuit. There will be a lawsuit. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I think she... Uh, let me look it up. I think she said she was going to, like, look into suing. She w had tweeted a bunch about it and was tweeting other people who hurt themselves, so it seems pretty clear that she's looking into it, and it's probably yeah. going to build a case. Yeah, which, which she should. I mean, because that... Uh, uh, that's ridiculous that, like there are foam pits all across the country like they're common like you you can't find someone to like build you a proper one i know yeah i don't know what made them think this was okay uh i did see a video of uh some like small streamer i think uh, uh, uh these actually multiple people getting into a fight over the one piece of foam that supposedly adriana landed on <laughs> somebody <laughs> stole it and then somebody else tried to steal it from them and there was like a whole back and forth and, and they got into a physical altercation um, well i mean wouldn't you want to win the piece of foam that famous adult film actress and twitch streamer adriana chechik landed on say. her her butt landed on that phone i thought you're gonna say Those... the, the block that blew out her back because that's what that's what one of the uh articles uh i think dex dexerto uh the headline was yeah. adult film star blows her back out at twitchcon or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, there's, a, there's a lot of really like lowbrow jokes about this i'm not gonna of... make that because i'm a classy guy polygon and kotaku and some other websites just called her streamer which i think was pretty cool because she, I mean, that's what she is now. She's just a that's streamer. what she is now. But I mean, let's let's you know, not you know, she's, we yeah. know what she's famous for. <laughs> yeah, if it's like fucking you know ABC News, they're gonna say a, a former adult film star. Yeah, blow her, blew, uh, you know, hurt her back on this thing, right? Because because they're gonna want uh, a lot of clicks, right? Uh, so yeah, that's horrible. Uh, there's other d w weird shit going on at TwitchCon. Uh, uh, apparently the CEO of Twitch had like a meeting with a bunch of uh, uh streamers, uh, to mm -hmm. like see how he's doing and stuff. And all the streamers are like, "That dude d d fucking doesn't know what Twitch even is." <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it. I don't know. I'd like to hear from Jackson. He he was there. I'd like to hear uh, how his ex TwitchCon experience was. Uh, it does. It I I just can't imagine going to TwitchCon. Um, yeah, doesn't seem like my my si situation. I'd rather be at Comic Con or wherever the fuck else I I do. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, next is Gotham Knights. Oh yes. Uh, oh, there's spoilers. Man. This has spoilers for Gotham Knights, right? Yes. So the Eurogamer article does not spoil the game. Okay. So but we, we won't. Article does. So we're going to start without spoilers. And then when we get into spoilers, yes. we'll give everybody a fair warning. Yes. Uh, this is a quick public service announcement for those keen to avoid any spoilers for the upcoming uh, release of Gotham Knights. There are currently some major plot spoilers making their way around the internet following the apparent early release of the game's art book. Uh, I will not go into details of what they are here. I'm sure you are keen to know more. Uh, I'm sure if you are keen to know more, you will be able to find out exactly what it is uh, that has been revealed. But this leak has caused Gotham Knights executive producers to take to Twitter to complain about spoilers in general. I cannot begin to understand why, why would anyone spoil a story, whether it's a game, a movie, a book, whatever, for others. Uh, wrote uh, Fior Marty earlier today, if if you, like Marty, feel this way, I hope you manage to dodge any of the news out there. Uh, with the game's release only a couple weeks away and a new trailer uh, and a new trailer has now been released to celebrate the upcoming launch, see below, uh, this gives us a closer look at some of the enemies the Knights will face as well as how the foursome will cope following Batman's demise. Don't call them a foursome. What? Don't call them a foursome. That's what the article says. Don't, please, please... Okay, so so the art book has uh, been released early, and it, the art book contains like kind of a pretty big spoiler for the. Let's end of the open game. that bitch up, baby! I want to see okay. some spoilers. All right, everybody, tune out for like five minutes if you don't want spoilers. Yeah. I'm gonna put them so, on the screen right now. Uh, hold on, let me get to it. Uh, so it doesn't post the picture, but it will tell you. So I'm gonna read what the description is. 
Okay. Uh, so, context. The game takes place after Batman dies. I, I mean, I know. The, I already know what this is. <laughs> I know. I've been saying it since the game was revealed. Yes. Uh, screenshots of two pages making the rounds online reveal Bruce Wayne is actually resurrected at some point by Talia al Ghul using the Lazarus Pit. Uh, the art book goes on to detail an apparent boss fight with Batman where the players have to dodge uninterruptible attacks while also using speech prompts to try and bring a berserk cape crusader back to his senses. What happens next isn't exactly clear, and there is already fan disagreement. One interpretation is that Batman dies again while trying mm -hmm. to protect his surrogate family from Talia. Another is that he survives, allowing for some interesting possibilities in the endgame and post-launch updates. It's worth noting, however, that Gotham Knights is not officially part of the Arkham universe. That continuity will reemerge in 2023's Suicide Squad. In theory, then, WB Montreal could do whatever they want with Batman in Gotham Knights. It is weird that this is not in continuity with with the Arkham series because then why did he die? Because it, it, it yeah, makes it, sense no, for him to die and if, if it's Arkham continuity. It, yeah, it, it's... I mean, it's not weird that it's not part of the Arkham timeline. Like, I guess I can, make, I can see them wanting to do something new with Batman. What doesn't make sense is that, you know, Batman dies at the end of Arkham Knight and he dies at the beginning of this game. So it leads one to believe that the two games are connected. Yeah, and they look the same. Yeah. And they play the same. That's why I always thought it was connected to that. No. That's stupid. But I heard bad I heard a lot of bad things from the preview of this game. Did you see yeah. the preview uh playing as Batgirl? Where uh, there was Oh, uh, with the with the shitty Disney Channel pop punk version of living la vida loca see i saw that and people were getting people were making fun of it and i said will would love this <laughs> no no that's i thought that was right up your alley no no like it... you know why that's not that's why i hate that because they did the song wrong they did they, do the song wrong they did the song wrong it's the wrong song had they gotten like had they did, if it was a much more straight cover with mm -hmm. just you know distorted guitars then maybe i would have been okay with it but no they tried to make it they they try they, the best i can describe it is it sounds like a disney channel mm -hmm. version of a pop punk cover and, and will, will is it uh just feels disingenuous will is a uh all female punk band connoisseur. So when I heard that, <laughs> I thought this is this is Will's gonna love this. This is gonna be great. You, you, you listen to every Donna's record, and all of a sudden you get a you get a fucking stigma attached. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think this game's. I, I have very bad feelings about this game now. Every I already was like, him. all right, I'll give it a chance, but now I'm like, I don't know about this. Every preview I've seen of this game so far just says it's fine. Mm -hmm. But, like, you're coming off of the Arkham series, which is, like, one of the best revered games of that generation. So it's kind of a step back. Also, it's WB Montreal, who's only made two games, this and Arkham Origins. And Arkham Origins is generally considered, like, the weakest of the series. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know. I uh, don't know. Ganthet, thank you for the 14 months. Uh, all right. Uh, hey, guys, somebody in the chat was talking about this. They're dying to hear us talk about how there's a new Nintendo Switch system update. It's system update number 15. Yes. It's live now. Would you like yes, to hear I to update all of the Switch. patch notes? Yeah, I haven't updated my either. Would you guys like to hear all the patch notes of all the new things you could do with your Nintendo Switch and system update 15? <laughs> uh, the location of Bluetooth audio menu within system settings has been moved. Ooh. Where has it been moved? Nobody knows. <laughs> Screenshots can be taken using the capture button while a Nintendo Switch Online application found on the Nintendo Switch home menu. Note, video capture is not supported. This is a so, weird thing to add. Yeah, so what does this mean? Like you can so you take know how, screenshots you know how in on the Switch home screen? Online games? No, because you've always been able to do that. 
Right. You know how on the home menu, there's a switch yes. online icon on the bottom. It's a red icon. Yes. You click on that and it takes you to a page. Mm-hmm. That page you can now take screenshots on. Oh, okay. It's like the switch online like management page. It shows you like your family plan and stuff and like all that shit. Got uh, it. That you can screenshot now. So yay. Okay. But you can't take video of that page. For some reason. There's okay. there's weird shit like that. Like uh there's weird system menu pages that like you can't take screenshot or video for some reason. Uh and I mm-hmm. guess they just decided to turn it on here. I don't know why. Um also, last but not least, general system stability improvements. Oh, thank God. But Data Miner Oatmeal Dome shares a bit more. <laughs> and he's always, I mean, hes we have to rely on people like him to tell us what's really going on. Uh, yeah. Mentioning how the Pro Controller's Bluetooth firmware has also been updated. Uh, appears to have uh, The update appears to have focused on the OS internals for this update. Handling of the Ethernet adapters was moved to its own dedicated OS module. Interesting. Uh, Maybe. I mean, I doubt that'll help with the Switch Online. Uh, Pro Controller Bluetooth firmware was updated. Various error messages were added and changed. Uh, A pop-up was added for attempting to exceed the max headphone volume while the limiter is on. Bad words for mainland China were updated. Uh, the time zone database uh, was updated to the latest from ICANN. I guess that's like a it's like a universal like standard for time zones. Uh, yeah. Text related to Australia and New Zealand privacy laws was added. Okay. I'm interested to see what the handling of Ethernet adapters being moved has to do with anything. Yeah. Uh. And I, I I doubt the firmware update on the uh, Pro Controller matters too much. <laughs> there you go. We got a whole 15.0.0 update. It's a whole number up, there you and go. there's like nothing there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next we got two unreleased NES games that have turned up on eBay. Give me them. What are they? I want them. Yes. Uh, f- Hold on. Nothing is working. Uh, spotted and shared by Video Game Historian History Foundation's Frank Cifaldi. The first game is called Battlefields of Napoleon and comes in the form of a prototype cartridge for the game, along with, incredibly, its original packaging design as it would have been sent to Nintendo for printing on game boxes. Um, this, just a quick note, this is before Photoshop, so they actually, like, cut out these pictures and, like, glued them to paper and sent it to Nintendo for printing. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the artwork uh, well, is literally cut out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, while well, this particular version of the game, localized into English and published by Broderbund, is unreleased, we do at least know what this is since it was originally out in Japan as Napoleon Senki, an incredibly ambitious real-time strategy game for the Famicom that, as frustrating as, frustrating as it looks to actually play, also has some amazing static visuals. Um, the second game is w- is where the real mystery lies. The, un- the unassuming cartridge marked as CES sample uh, and as having come from Rare is for a demo of a game developed specifically for the Nintendo Power Glove. Oh. It's just a blank NES cartridge with a nondescript CES sample label on it. Uh, there weren't many of those. There aren't, weren't many Power Glove games with only two ever being released with specific power glove support one of them super glove ball was also developed by rare this would have been a third uh nobody in the public has ever seen or played this game with no physical or digital dumps having been ever made into the wild we do have some hints as to what it was about though rare's james thomas put out a call earlier today for information on the demo and was told by former programmer paul byford that he recalls it was a puzzle game where the cursor was a disembodied hand and you made different gestures to complete tasks, punching rocks or turning keys. That makes preservation of the game pretty important, which is why Video Game History Foundation are trying to secure funds needed to get hold of the cartridge. As Cifaldi said on Twitter earlier today, though, while his while this is exactly the kind of thing his organization would normally purchase, at the moment, the resources are stretched thin and could use a little help. Where 
I'm noticing uh, nowhere has a link to the eBay. Ah, uh, if it's on eBay, why aren't they linking to it? That's a good question. They want they want the History Foundation to get it. It's not, it's yeah, like they don't want you to be able to get it. Makes sense. Uh, f- hold on, I just lost my spot. Uh, if you want to help, you can DM Cifaldi on Twitter where you can discuss tax-deductible options if you're in the U.S. He already has says he has about $4,000 in pledges from people. But given the rarity of both games and the insanity of the market for this kind of thing, um, there's no guarantee that it will be enough. I found him. Uh, Battlefields of Napoleon is currently at $2,000. only has two bids. Okay. And it's just got five days left, though. This is going to shoot up. And yeah. uh, the rare one is also $2,400. This one has 17 bids, though. And this one ends in two days. So oh. this one, this one's a bit... Uh, people are more interested in this, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so there it is. That's cool. Good, good luck, everybody. <laughs> yeah. That's see, I, I, I two thousand dollars is not bad. This could no. go up to over ten, I think, for each. Oh yeah. And oh, then definitely. and then that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would not want that. Hopefully they get. Hopefully the video game history foundation could put some ROMs up. Could like leak some ROMs or something. Because yeah, otherwise, that, otherwise, that be... why would I want them to have it? <laughs> I know. Well, no, the, that's what the video game foundation does. They they dump ROMs of things like this so that people can have access to it in some capacity. Mm-hmm. You know, I would rather them get it than some private collector who's just going to sit on it and not do anything. Or well, worse, some heritage auction fund asshole guy comes over, buys it, and like artificially jacks up the price of the market what is the legality of taking this and uploading a rom though uh i mean they're both prototypes so i think i mean i guess technically rare could go after them for the one game but i don't know if they would yeah i mean brotobund isn't a company anymore so i don't think they can go after them for the napoleon game Mm mm-hmm that that's my concern because like yeah they're putting a face on it like this is the video game history foundation we want to take it and preserve it and whatever but like uh then if they upload a rom then they know who did it because it's, it's yeah it's gonna be the video game history foundation if some schmo gets their hands on it and freaking uploads it no it, it it's it could be ambiguous you know no one yeah it, no one would know anyway uh what's the last thing we have here inside look at xbox game pass arrangement so this is uh how do i put this so basically uh youtuber gp found a legal document that reveals the agreement between snail games and uh, studio wildcard um and microsoft to keep arc 2 uh which has not released yet uh to keep it, to keep the game in Game Pass for a period of three years after it eventually launches. Uh, the same legal document also states that Microsoft and Snail Games' agreement for Ark Survival Evolved was amended in uh, June 2020 to keep the game in Game Pass perpetually as of January 1st, 22. Uh, the company also has a long-term title lease agreement, uh, Game Pass, with Microsoft for a period of three years, the filing says, uh, the agreement was initially made between the parties in November 2018 through uh, December 20, December 31st, 2021. The agreement was sequentially amended in June of 2020 to extend the ARC-1 Game Pass perpetually effective January 1st, 2022, and to put ARC-2 on Game Pass for three years upon its release. The filing also states that Snail Games received $2.5 million from Microsoft to keep Ark Survival Evolved on Game Pass and was paid $2.3 million for Ark 2 to join Game Pass at release. It was also revealed that Sony paid $3.5 million to include Ark Survival Evolved in March 2022's uh, PS Plus lineup. So I just put this in there because I thought it was interesting because we always like wonder how like these deals work and now we know. Now we know what's going on. Uh, Yeah. That's a lot of money. I mean, Ark yeah. is a pretty big game, so it yes. makes a little bit of sense. But this isn't even an exclusive thing, right? No, it's uh, it's going to be a multi-platform title. Of 
Arc Two is going to be uh, is going to launch on Game Pass day and date. Um, so they're getting two point three million million dollars for that. Interesting. And the first game is got uh, two point five million uh, to stay in Game Pass. That's so. That's a lot of money just yeah. to be. Well, I guess I guess they're mitigating sales. Like, the, like they can like the company can expect that they're going to lose out on a couple of sales because it's going to be part of Game Pass, so they're going to need some money yeah. for that. So that makes that makes a decent amount of sense. Yeah. Uh, is it Game Pass PC? Because I'd imagine this is going to be a big PC title. I'd imagine so. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I'd yeah. like to see what the difference is if it were to be an exclusive to Microsoft. Oh, I'm sure it would have been much more money. <laughs> yes, uh, that's still a lot of money, though. Oh that's, yeah, that's a pretty that's a pretty decent. It's basically you're a developer. You don't know how good your game's going to be. This is a guaranteed 2.3 million right yeah. at launch. So you just have to be able to keep the game going for for three yeah. years. Anyway, uh, that's it, right? Yes, that is it. That is your news. That is all of the news that happened this week. Nothing else happened. Not a single thing yeah. except for... Tweet of the week! Tweet of the week! Tweet of the week! It took me a second to find the button. Uh, this is from... It's a big name. Sangaizu Gabog. I'm glad bands are loud at shows because my <laughs> ass be farting. Yeah. The same. <laughs> I too am farting at shows. Yes. Anyway, uh, now we're going to talk to you people real quick. Yes. Starting with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. Keyholes said, honestly, it's incredibly on brand that on episode 100, you're talking about whether Mario's butt is peachy enough. Here's to another <laughs> 100, guys. Thanks, dude. Thank you. Uh, Yukio says, damn, 100 already. Been watching since the old podcast. Crazy how time flies. I know 100's a lot of time, yeah. a lot of a lot of episodes. We are we are so old, guys. <laughs> we are so old. Uh, Treble says, wow, 100 episodes. I shaved my balls for the occasion using my Manscaped lawnmower. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Thank <laughs> you. We appreciate it. Hope you use the promo code Wolf then. Uh, Funky says, where else can you go for this in-depth coverage of Mario's ass? Nowhere. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Fred says, Fred the, put his own comment in here. And said, how is it I've been pulling comments for 100 episodes and I still haven't found anything better to do? Congrats on re-reaching the milestone, guys. <laughs> what did the last Thank podcast you. get up to? It got up to like 300, I think. Yeah. Uh, Rinkashi Kachi says, you people have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, here we go. Now we're back to the regular, yeah, the good, regular yeah. comments. Overwatch 2 works on the same servers as Overwatch 1 played on. They've shut down one game and turned on another version of of it on the same servers. So? <laughs> and it is literally the same app. Overwatch 2 was a patch to installed oh, was a patch to installed Overwatch client. It never was a separate icon in Blizzard's launcher or separate folder on a drive. Both in beta and during pre-release, it was just an update on existing Overwatch 1 installment. I played it. <laughs> I did all that. I know. Why why are you attacking? I don't understand. I don't remember what we talked about last week. I fucking played it. I know all that. <laughs> what did we say? Uh, I I I don't even remember. I know there was some like there was some talk because like there over there's Overwatch 2 coming and that they were going to nuke Overwatch 1 completely and like basically take it down and replace it with overwatch 2 that's what it sounded like they were doing it, they did yeah they did do that but i'm sh you know that would be you know it sounded like it would be the equivalent of when call of duty modern warfare 2 comes out you're no longer going to be able to play modern warfare 1 ever again that's yes. what it sounded like that is what it is it is that yes <laughs> that is what happened honestly kind of like how they did it I wish they would do that to Destiny. 
make a big update to Destiny and just call it Destiny 3. And then that would get me interested to play it again. Well, apparently... We didn't even finish reading the rest of their comment. But oh. apparently... Like, it's not going well because the launch has been an absolute disaster. Nobody's happy about the way this game came out. I out. didn't see there was more. So it is ex exactly the same game. The reason why nobody could get in is because the game was pretty much on life support with literally no updates for several years. So Blizzard most likely sold some server capacity. Also, the game became free to play. Plus hype. Oh, so that's what he's... Ar I think this person's arguing that, like... Uh, um. Because we were last week, we were talking about how the servers uh, uh, didn't work, and it and people yeah. they were blaming DDoS attacks, and we were like, no, it's not. It can't be that. That that's yeah. Th there that seems like an excuse. <clears throat> and um, we agree with you. I don't know why you're so hostile about it. <laughs> we're all on the same page. That's what happened. They they didn't have this enough enough ser servers allocated. Uh, but uh. Yeah, no one's happy with the way that it's been. Uh, but but you yeah. know what? I played it, and it it feels like this the same like shit that was going on with Overwatch One. It's hard to get into queues where uh, you have to mm -hmm. all pick your roles. It's easier to get into queues where you don't have to pick your role, and everybody can just pick whatever they want. Um, but it's fun. It's a fun game, and I'm glad that they updated it, and it made me want to play it, and I'm, I had fun with it at least one night, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll probably play it again. So. Uh, I'm and and you know what? It's on Switch. The Switch version also just updates. All of your shit carries over, <laughs> and supposedly it runs great there too. So uh, there you go. I think uh, I'm actually kind of happy with it. I'm not happy with the server issues, but uh, otherwise, uh, I think it's been pretty good. Kjax says, "Did you see that in Japan movie theaters?" Uh, had they had to put out a statement telling people to stop using their phones during movies? No, I didn't see that. Uh, I mean, we get those statements in America theaters all the time. Silence your cell phones. I like Alamo Draft House because they will just kick you out. And I really, yeah. I hate, I cannot fucking stand it when somebody's on their phone in the movie theater. My yeah. when my fucking friends do it, I yell at them. I get very angry because they're next to me and they're on their phone. I can see their phone light. Yeah. At the very least, turn the brightness all the way down. Yeah. That's why I like Alamo Draft House, because then it will just literally kick you out if you pull your phone out. Wait, it's on Switch? Yes, Overwatch 2 is on Switch. And it's the same game, and it's cross-play and everything. Uh, did you bros hear how people prefer the French version of Mario's voice? Yes, I did Yes, that. And I think uh, that's weird, because there's an Italian voice. <laughs> yes. And both of them sound similar they both have like the higher pitch that like charles martinet kind of has yeah so overwatch look cool but every time i i think about playing it i just rather play splatoon i don't blame you yeah um y'all watching mario sub dude dubbed <laughs> I saw a trail. I I saw the trailers. I I found a uh, a, a compilation that was uh, the American version, the French version, and then the Japanese version. I was like, oh, I can't I can't wait to see the Japanese version. What's that gonna sound like? And it plays the, through all of the trailers, and then it gets to the Japanese version. And the Japanese version is just the English version with Japanese <laughs> subtitles. So, as far as I know, there's only that one. there's only English, French, and and Italian. I haven't heard any anything else. I think there's Brazilian also. Okay. Uh, the French version sounded way more like Mario for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And also the Italian version. Yeah. Overwatch 2 just seems so samey as the original. It is. I'm enjoying Nier Automata. That's a completely different game. It's like yeah. a better version of Xenoblade Chronicles mixed with Bayonetta. I haven't touched that. I've been enjoying the original yeah. Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Does Mario uh, speak English in the Japanese games? No, he speaks Italian. Well, I mean, yeah. he speaks English. It's the same. It's Charles Martinet in, in Japan. All right. That's uh, it. Okay. Thanks for hanging thank out, you everybody. For, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version so you can watch it 
on demand whenever you want. It's over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Uh, if you prefer to listen to us YouTube rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Uh... All right, go watch Woody's playing No Man's Sky. Uh, it was his birthday yesterday, and today is when he's capitalizing on it. Uh, there you go. I'll see you probably Thursday for some shit, from sh- some shenanigans, some tomfoolery. <laughs> uh, there'll also be a video on Thursday, so look out for that. It's on the Analog Pocket, because there's Ooh. new stuff to do for the Analog Ooh. Pocket. And uh, hey, we'll see you later. Uh, Goodbye. Bye.